I'm going to teach you how to write an advanced body paragraph. Let's take a look at the organization. So first you need to start with your lead or introductory paragraph, which you hopefully you've already written, that has a central claim. Then you're going to write body paragraph 1 about issue 1, body paragraph 2 about issue 2, and body paragraph 3 about issue 3. Then you'll have your concluding paragraph. Please note that if you're doing the advanced option, then you will be writing about one issue all the way through, just different aspects of that issue. For your advanced body paragraph, this is the organization. First you start with a transition sentence, a topic sentence, then you have your introduce evidence, write your evidence, give your explanation in three to four sentences, then you'll have a transition, you'll introduce your next piece of evidence, give that piece of evidence, write your explanation in three to four sentences, and write a concluding sentence that wraps up everything. Oops, that is supposed to say um, writing an advanced body paragraph. So here's my central claim or argument that I wrote in my introduction. In fact, power in ancient Athens was in the hands of a few. Inequality was visible in voting rights and treatment of medics, slaves, and women. I want you to make sure that you have this all filled out before you continue. So pause really quick and just make sure that this is all filled out. If it is, you can just keep going. So these are my three supporting claims. My first one is Athenian women faced many inequalities in their day-to-day -day life. This is what I'm going to be focusing on today, and I already have my, my pieces of evidence for that. So my topic sentence. So in my topic sentence, I'm just going to pull that from that page that you just saw, and I'm going to write it down. This is what I wrote. In ancient Athens, women's, women faced many inequities in their day-to-day -day life. So now I'm going to write my um, transition. So in my transition, I need to link my central claim, which is this, to my topic sentence. So my transition it needs to somehow link the fact that um, there was inequality in voting rights and the treatment of women, medics, and slaves to my topic sentence where I talk about how women face many inequalities, inequities. This is what I do. Equity and fairness did not always play a large role in Athenian democracy. This really easily transitions me from talking about my central claim to talking about this first topic sentence. So right now I'm going to ask you to pause and write out your um, transition sentence and make sure to look at it in this format so that you can really see that it transitions you from your central claim to your topic sentence. Okay. So now I'm going to introduce my evidence. When I introduce my evidence, I might give you something like the author or the title and any relevant information. That might include information about the source or the text of study. Here are some examples of how to introduce your evidence. This can also be found at the bottom of your Schoology page. This is how I introduce my evidence. So, in an analysis of women's rights in ancient Athens published on the Ancient History Encyclopedia website, O'Neill discusses the role of women in ancient Athenian society. So this is how I'm introducing my evidence. I'm talking about, I tell you a little bit about what the article discusses before I introduce it. Next, I'm going to choose my first piece of evidence. So I might take a look at this form again and decide which one I think is the best piece to talk about first. So I'm going to choose this first one, Classical Athenian Girls were not formally educated. Rather, their mothers would have taught them the skills they would need to run a household. When they married, Athenian women had two main roles, to bear children and to run the household. So I'm just going to pull that over, and you should see it on your page. So now I'm going to have you pause and have you write a really good introduction to your evidence, 
and make sure that you think about the first piece of evidence that you want to write about when you do this. Now I'm going to explain that first piece of evidence. So I'm going to explain it in three to four sentences and I'm going to make sure to add any additional details here that help explain the topic sentence so that by the end of the explanation you have a strong understanding of both the topic sentence and the evidence. So here's my explanation. Although Athenian democracy deemed equality for all, the system failed to recognize women as part of the all. If women were Athenian born, they were required to be caregivers and home managers, but they had little independence in even this. So notice how I'm already arguing how um, Athenian democracy told everyone that there's equality, but really women didn't have that much equality. They didn't have much independence. They learned most of their jobs from their mothers and were not allowed to be formally educated. Most women spent their time at home cooking, cleaning, and weaving, and caring for children. When they were allowed to be outside the home, they needed to be accompanied by a man. That was part of their family. So notice how I really explained to you this piece of evidence. I show you, I argue how um, they did not have rights, although they were supposed to have rights. So now I'm going to have you pause, and I want you to write your first explanation for that first piece of evidence. Make sure that it's at least three to four sentences long. All right, let's keep going. So now I'm going to write a transition. So this transition needs to transition me from the end of this paragraph, the sentence, when they were allowed to be outside the home, they needed to be accompanied by a man that was part of their family. And it needs to transition me into the next piece of evidence that I'm going to write about. So this is what I say. Legally, Athenian-born women's rights, Ath Athenian-born women's rights were limited in Athenian society. So I transition you from talking about how women were held in the household and didn't have a lot of rights to how they didn't have a lot of light rights outside of their home in the government. So I'm going to have you pause again and write your transition sentence. Make sure to think about that next piece of evidence and how you can, com you can transition the two ideas. So now you're going to introduce your next piece of evidence. Um, this is the way that I introduce that piece of evidence. So I use this second one. According to an article titled Women in Classical Athens, it states that women, and then I go into that quote. So I'm just going to look back at that organization and pull that quote over, or that evidence over. So it should look like this. So according to an article titled Women in Classical Athens, it states that women were barred from political participation and Athenian women were not permitted to represent themselves in law. So really quick, I'm going to have you pause, write out your introduction to your evidence, and choose that piece of evidence. What I really want you to think about, though, before you go ahead and do this, is making sure that your evidence really works together to support your topic sentence. You want to make sure that they both address something similar, and that they build on each other to make a really strong paragraph. So go ahead and do that now. All right. So now to write an effective explanation again, remember that you need to really explain it in your own words, talk about how it maybe supports the topic sentence, so that I have a really good understanding of both the topic sentence and your evidence by the end of the explanation. Women, in other words, were not allowed to hold governmental positions or vote. As their only means for power, women used their voice to try and influence men and their families. So here I'm again referring to how they don't have equal equality because they aren't allowed to use their voice, and the only way they can use that voice is by influencing men and their families. In the greater society, however, women's voices were silenced by not allowing them to participate in government or politics. 
Though Athenian democracy claimed to be equal for all, Athenian democracy only allowed freeborn Athenian men rights to have a, a voice. All others were not treated with the same equality. Here again, I bring back that argument that women don't have the same equality, they don't have a voice, and they don't have the same rights. So when I get to my concluding sentence, oh, actually I'm going to have you pause really quick, sorry about that, and I want you to write your second explanation. Make sure that you're really driving home your point here. All right, now on to your concluding sentence. I want you to again pull out that central claim. So every time you write a concluding sentence, you need or a topic sentence or a transition, I want you to look back at that central claim. So in my concluding sentence, I need to wrap up the idea of the paragraph and connect it back to the central claim and think about how the paragraph supports the central argument. So my central claim is that, in fact, power in ancient Athens was in the hands of a few. Inequality was visible in voting rights and treatment of medic slaves and women. And my topic sentence was, in ancient Athens, women faced many inequities in their day-to-day -day life. So my, con my concluding sentence needs to wrap up both of these ideas and really drive home the point. So women in Athenian democracy did not have the same rights as men. It's short, sweet, and to the point, and it really drives home the idea that women didn't have the same rights as men did. Let's read the whole essay, the whole paragraph, sorry. Equity and fairness did not always play a large role in Athenian democracy. In ancient Athens, women faced many inequities in their day-to-day -day life. In an analysis of women's rights in ancient Athens, published on the Ancient History Encyclopedia website, O'Neill discusses the role of women in ancient Athenian society. Classical Athenian girls were not formally educated. Rather, their mothers would have taught them the skills they would need to run a household. When they married, Athenian women had two main roles, to bear children and to run the household. Although Athenian democracy deemed equality for all, the system failed to recognize women as part of the all. If women were Athenian-born, they were required to be caregivers and home managers, but they had little independence in even this. They learned most of their jobs from their mothers and were not allowed to be formally educated. Most women spent their time at home cooking and cleaning, weaving, and caring for children. When they were allowed to be outside of the home, they needed to be accompanied by a man that was part of their family. Legally, Athenian-born women's rights were limited in Athenian society. According to an article titled Women in Classical Athens, it states that women were barred from political participation and Athenian women were not permitted to represent themselves in law. Women, in other words, were not allowed to hold governmental positions or vote. As their only means for power, women used their voice to try and influence men and their families. In the greater society, however, women's voices were silenced by not allowing them to participate in government or politics. Though Athenian democracy claimed to be equal for all, Athenian democracy only allowed freeborn Athenian men rights to have a voice. All others were not treated with the same equality. Women in Athenian democracy did not have the same rights as men. So now you hopefully have your first body paragraph completed. You've written all 10 parts of your paragraph. So now I challenge you to go ahead and write body paragraph 2 and body paragraph 3. I know that you're able to complete this. You can do it.